already given some advice forward for Eric Ten Hag when talking about who should be the captain at Manchester United. He believes that the dressing room should actually decide this. So much no well, listen. Listen, let, let, let me pick. Let's, let's say what he says and then you can oh, tell yeah, what I can't you wait. about yeah, it. I can't wait All right, this. he says, I strongly I love, believe... I I'm, almost, I'm smitten when he talks. <laughs> I strongly believe the captain should be elected by the team because he's called the team manager and we always did that. We always had a board of four or five players. We call it the Spielerat, Players' Council, elected by the players. The player with the highest amount of votes was the team captain at the end. That's what I would do if I was still the manager next season. But in the end, I'm not. This is something that Eric Ten Hag will have to decide. Go on then, Craig. Is he even talking to Derek Ray or what? <laughs> I, Derek might correct me on my German there as well. It's called it. German's always got a word for something, a spiel or whatever. How about nonsense? Look, Eric Ten Hag, Eric Ten Hag has to come in and show, like, Sir Alex Ferguson, who we all know the history, he has to show that he can make big, hard decisions. And as Augie was saying, garnish that respect in the dressing room. You don't want to come in and say, I'm going to make big decisions, but, oh, hold on, do you guys mind having a little vote over your cup of tea and tell me who's going to be captain? He's got to come in there and make some huge decisions, in my opinion. He's got to suss out the dressing room, who's staying, who's going, who's coming in, who's a leader. I don't want... I've got no interest in players picking their mates and their little cliques in the dressing room. So take your spieler out or your whatever it is <laughs> and stick it where the sun doesn't shine because it needs people to come in and make big, hard decisions on players. And if other players don't like it, get them out. It's not a time to be soft-soaping these superstars. You know, on, yeah. on, on the face of it, I don't necessarily have an issue with what, what Randick is saying here. If he were the manager next season, the issue is whoever is, is Ten Hag coming in or whoever it was going to be, would have to build this dressing room around how he plans to move things forward. And I find this, to, to Mark's point, with Ranić saying things that appeases the fans, but, but nobody else makes no sense otherwise, this is right in keeping with that. If I were the manager next season, I would do it this way. But you're not mm. the manager next season. You've done nothing this season to suggest that the philosophy that you bring, anybody needs to take note of, Ten Hag or, or anybody else. So, so why say it? And, and again, it, it is to what Mark just alluded to. This appeases the fans, but anybody within that dress room, anybody within the game is just seeing straight through this. What will Eric Ten Hag yeah. think of that then, Mario, coming from Ralph Rangnick, giving this information forward for next season? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with the guys. I think when you when you are a manager, one of the key things is I think when Tanar comes in, it's making sure that everybody respects you. I mean, if you come in a dressing room and you have so many egos and whatever you want to call it in front of you, the moment one of the key guys in the dressing room doesn't trust you or believes in you, and you keep him in the team, you have a problem. So that is one of the key things. So that's why when Ronick said that, I know exactly what he means because. We had some like that, but it were more like um, the, the guys who were longer at the team, so we had the more seasoned players. You know, they could maybe say something to the manager, but eventually he makes the decision, and he should make the decision. So I think when, when um, uh, Ten Hag comes in, um, he, he's going to look at the team. He's already doing that anyway, because I'm, I'm sure he's not a guy that just turns up and just starts his homework from the moment he's there. He's saying it on TV in Holland. He says a lot like, oh, no, I'm not thinking about anything. No, he's thinking about the Man United job because it's a big job. But eventually when he comes there, he knows his decisions already. Like people in Holland are talking about if he's going to let uh, Ronaldo, is he going to have a conversation, he's going to keep him and stuff like that. I mean, like Shaka said, or like Greg said, he's not, the biggest problem is not him. The biggest problem is what are you going to do in building a successful team? Because that's what people are eager to. To, to listen to and to watch. But at this moment now, having Randnick, he is the coach now. He doesn't have to decide what the coach is going to do after because after that, he's not relevant anymore. We're not going to watch or listen to a person that's not in charge anymore. So they want to listen to what he's got to do now, what he's going to say, what he's going to do, how he's going to make the team play better, how he's going to put the, the coach in the right position because at the moment now, all the things that like we highlighted, pressing, uh, the fitness, the German players are always very fit. They always know how to press really well. But all those things Man United is not good at. They get overturned 
every single time they play a game. And that's sad to watch. What are your thoughts on this topic, Don, about the captain's role? I find it absolute waffle from Ralph Ranjik. I mean, that statement tells you everything you need to know about his management style. And I say that loosely because he hasn't got any style and he hasn't got any power. You know, if you can't come in and there's a million and one things to do as a coach or a manager, but if you can't come in and you can't have the gumption to choose who your captain's going to be, and as Craig said, oh, do you mind having a little mother's meeting and a little cup of tea and choose who you want to be as captain? No. If Harry Maguire's not playing well and he can't carry Man United because his own form's gone out the window, you take the armband off him and you give it to Ronaldo or you give it to someone that you think is captain material. Forget about being nice to people. If you can't make that decision, what chance have you got? And I don't think he's got any power. I think from day one he's come in and a lot of the people were going, well, he's had two clubs in 10 years. How's he got the profile and how's he got this job? This is one of the biggest jobs, and most important jobs in world football. He's come in, he's been, he's been very average Awful. since day one. He come in, tried to confuse everyone, thought he was being clever, coming in and playing 4-2-2-2 two, 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 and people were going to buy that. We've seen through it because it's 4-4-2. Four, four, then he goes five at the back and four three three. He's searching for something because he doesn't know what he's doing, and that tells you everything you need to know in that statement. This club needs, I mean, needs many things, but it, it needs authority and big decision making. And I, I, I don't know. I, I presume uh, uh, Ten Hag has has got the the skill set to do that. He's going to need to have the skill set to do it if he's going to be uh, successful. He's going to need other things to go his way as well, but he's going to have to show, because the guys all know, when you walk into a club or a new coach walks into a club or whatever it is, the players can suss out fast a weakness and they'll play on it. <laughs> and they'll use it for an excuse for their bad performances. But if a manager comes in, the training's good, he's good talking to the players, he's hard but fair, he's straight and he makes big decisions, you might not like him and you might not agree with him, you might not even be playing, mm -hmm. but you have to respect that's how he's going to operate. They do not need some wishy-washy person coming in and allowing the dressing room to make decisions because when results are start to go badly, if that's what happens, the press will go on them and say, well, yeah, you let the players do this and you let the players do that. You have to live and die by your decisions. The best managers have all lived and died and succeeded or failed by making hard decisions that they thought were right at the time and that's what the uh, incumbent manager at Manchester United needs to do because there's too many players in my opinion looking from the outside at Manchester United that are looking for an excuse that are looking for a fall guy and they've pretty much found it in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and they've definitely found it and Ralph Ranić. It goes back to what you were saying, and I hear you laughing along there, Mario, about demanding that respect from the minute that you step into that dressing room. Yeah, definitely. You know, like, look, when I came to England, you know, in, in the beginning, uh, we talked before the show about Dennis White, actually. My first training, I, I kicked like crazy because he was one of the leading guys. So he made sure that I understood, like, listen, my friend, you could be really technical and coming from, from Holland, but this is England. <laughs> Here are different issues. So he made sure I, I knew he was the boss. Then I go to, to Wigan. When I joined Wigan, the, I, I came in, the deal was already done. I just had to discuss with the coach and then the owner walks into the, to the club. The owner literally says in front of the coach, Mary is going to be the captain of our team. There was no discussion with the teammate. And I looked at the coach at that time when the owner said that, Dave Whelan. I looked at the, the coach, I was like, is it really? And he said like, yes, Mario, I agree with him. And that's how I became the captain of the team. He said, the only job you have, Mario, keep my team in the Premier League. That was my, my, my biggest thing. And I knew, like, I didn't want to have a moment. Like, I already knew I felt to relegate. So that was one of my dreams that I never wanted to see that moment happen again. So now going to, to running, that's why I, I cannot understand it. And then when, when um, Ten Hag comes, he is very uh, decision-making. Tactically, he's very good. Okay, technically, everybody knows how, the, how the, the, the Dutch league works. But one thing I always say to every Dutch coach that comes abroad to England, we have seen a number of them, is that they make sure they make the difference really well. Because the English league is different than the Dutch league. Character-wise, they're not the same. It's way 10 times quicker, and you will not have breaks to settle down because it, they pick up the pace really quickly. And sometimes we get surprised by that when we're coming from a different country. 
I worked uh, under, uh, lucky enough to work under Vim Janssen at Celtic uh, in his only season there, my first season. Going back to the Dutch point, and I'm not generalising, all right, I am. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> uh, but, but his way of thinking, and I don't know if it's sort of universal along with the Dutch coaches, is a very, bl blinkered would be the wrong way, but very focused. And he would, he would allow people uh, to, to have their say, but ultimately he would say, OK, you've had your say, but this is the way we're going to do it. And yeah, yeah. I, think, I think ultimately that's the way, because we had a slow start to the season and there was a few problems, a lot of pressure from the Celtic supporters, but he stuck by his guns. And I think that's what the new coach here has to, has to do, is stick by his guns and hopefully the yeah. club will stick by him because it's going to be a long haul job, Kay. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.